This is a story about the protections of individual liberties versus the right of a state to enforce its criminal laws by seeking the return of an indicted person located in another state. You're going to have to pay attention to the details. Mr. Smith's petition claims that he was unlawfully taken into custody and that the indictment in Missouri against him was obtained by fraud, bribery, and duress. Joseph Smith, Jr., the beloved but intensely persecuted founding prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is at the heart of hearings and reenactment held at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum in Springfield, Illinois. The Illinois State Supreme Court Historic Preservation Commission co-sponsored the event, held on September 24th, which was centered on extradition hearings that took place in the 1840s, where in the state of Missouri sought to force Joseph's return to face charges, but were challenged by the abuse of persecution of the church and by Joseph, who successfully employed a writ of habeas corpus, which questioned the authority of that state to arrest, transfer, and detain him. Yes, my eyes have beheld the blood-stained traces of innocent women and children in the drear winter who have traveled hundreds of miles barefoot through frost and snow to seek a refuge from their savage pursuers. Gladly would I stand alone and proudly spend my latest breath in defense of an oppressed American citizen. The reenactment was followed by a discussion composed of a panel of legal, educational, and history scholars examining the court record and contemplating Joseph's circumstances at a time when the prophet was silent during the court proceedings in the 1840s. He never spoke during any of the three extradition hearings. And as I've thought about maybe why he didn't, was I think he might say, Jeff, you got it right. It wasn't about me. It was about my people. And finally, my people got to say what happened. Even when his captors wanted to take him back to Missouri, he said, no, I think I'll go to Nauvoo. He, he had them at the head table in his house for dinner. I mean, that's, that's just a wonderful human being. So what, what do I think Joseph Smith would say about what we've been doing? I think he'd be happy. I think he'd be glad that we're using the, uh, the experience that he had to go through, which he didn't find all the time to be pleasant, but that we're using that experience to educate children. And my hope is that he would see as I do uh, a real potential here to teach children about the proper way to behave, behave toward one another, and have respect for the rule of law. In preparing for the reenactment, representatives of the Illinois State Supreme Court reached out to the church through Elder Dallin H. Oaks of the Twelve to accurately reference its records of those historic events. As a legal scholar himself, Elder Oaks spoke on the subject of Joseph's legal proceedings at the Nauvoo Visitor Center after touring the historic Mormon community and visiting the Joseph Smith homestead along the banks of the Mississippi River. It's a remarkable history of obedience to law and respect for law by uh, a leader who, along with his people, was sometimes victimized by that law. I heard Judge King say on his bench, in the presence of hundreds of witnesses, that there was no law for Mormons and they need not expect any. One test of, of a person's character is whether they're able to practice what they preach, adhere to the principles that they have stood for, when to do so is very much to their disadvantage or to their detriment. And against that uh, true principle, one has to give high marks to Joseph Smith. For example, when he was summoned to Carthage, he responded, even though he I think knew that he would give his life by that means. 